G'day guys, it's been over 3 years since I made my first beginner's guide covering Don't Starve Together and some things that would help you when starting out, and not only has the game changed so much since that point, but my own playstyle has changed significantly, and while I still think that video is worth checking out, we're definitely overdue for a sequel that showcases the game in its current state. So without further ado, here are some tips for you. You must conduct science. This game doesn't really have a tech tree, but it does have science machines and magic machines that will allow you to craft the vast majority of the items in the game, and pretty much any of the actually good items in the game. If you ever feel like you're stuck in the early game and you don't know how to progress or how to get better, this is one of the easiest things you can do. Start with a science machine and then move on to an alchemy engine, prestahatitator and shadow manipulator. Look at all the items you can craft, what they do, what you need to build them and I guarantee that a lot of those things are either just lying on the floor somewhere or are much easier to gather than you think they are. Items crafted through one of these machines are also prototyped, meaning that you can craft more of them without having to come back to your base. It's a pretty good idea to prototype important tools and refined items early on, even if you don't particularly need them, because then you can craft them when you do. Further than this, you can even prototype certain structures and hold them in reserve for when you might need to place them. Classic examples of this are campfires or lightning rods. I know I am terrible with remembering to build lightning rods, so I try to prototype one as soon as I can and then just hold on to it until I need to place it down. Pretty much every structure that you can build onto the map can be prototyped and held in this way, so use that to your advantage. Something I noticed when watching my old gameplay footage is that I carried so much stuff on me at all times. At the start of the game, it's acceptable to carry some of the basic resources around since you're going to be making a lot of tools and torches and things like that. But if you're carrying all your tools, multiple foods and everything you pick up along the way, then you're not going to be able to do much without returning to your base every few minutes. Try to consolidate your inventory as much as you can and leave the rest at home. Upgrade to gold tools because they last a lot longer and take a few of them with you instead of all the crafting ingredients for every tool known to mankind. Trust me, you won't need them. And even if you do, you can always go back and get it or craft a new one. There are plenty of resources to go around. An extra pickaxe or two is not going to cause global warming or anything. And when you're leaving your items behind, don't worry too much about building chests for everything. There is so much to do at the start of the game, and you shouldn't have to waste a lot of that important time chopping trees and building chests. You can honestly just leave pretty much anything on the floor. Make sure your food is in an ice box and there are no mole worms nearby to eat your rocks, and you'll be completely fine. The first eye plants won't spawn until spring, so you've got more than 35 days to build chests if you need to, and eye plants can be completely mitigated by simply putting floorboards or another crafted turf underneath your stuff. And it's so much cheaper to do this too. Instead of building 5 chests, you can craft 60 pieces of wooden flooring. I've played more than a thousand days in my current world and I still have dozens of items just sitting on the floor. Embrace the floor base guys. And besides building chests, another massive time waster for beginners is simply the night. I mentioned this a bit in my first video already but night is a significant part of your time in the game and it shouldn't be wasted. And while torches are an adequate option for your first few days, it can be daunting to run around with only a very meagre light from a torch that also needs to be replaced every 45 seconds, so the sooner you upgrade your lighting items, the better. A lantern and a miner's hat are both very easy items to get, last considerably longer than a torch, and can be refueled instead of needing to be replaced. I definitely recommend building at least the miner's hat since you can wear it on your head and keep your hands free, but the lantern is good for the opposite reason, you can wear something on your head if you need to, like a football helmet. 
I was watching my old footage and I cannot believe it took me over 40 days to build either a lantern or a miner's hat. That's 40 days I was running around with only torches. Absolute madness. That would be torture to me now. And I could say the exact same thing about weapons and armor. If you're fighting with a spear and no armor, you're making the game so much harder for yourself. Ultimately, you should be aiming for dark swords, which do literally twice as much damage as a regular spear, but if you're not comfortable getting nightmare fuel or living logs yet, you could go for ham bats, tentacle spikes, or battle spears if you're playing as Wigfrid. The basic spear should be a last resort if there are no other alternatives. And when it comes to armor, log suits and football helmets are fairly cheap, have decent damage absorption, and last a good chunk of time too. One uses the head slot and one uses the body slot and you can determine which one you need depending on your situation. And when you do decide to settle down and start building a little home for yourself, don't feel like you need to base at the spawn point. It's often an alright location, but every world is different and you should explore it before you get stuck in a location that isn't great. Walk around the map, follow the roads and find out where the important biomes are. Check out the wormholes and sinkholes. Assess your needs and the needs of your friends. You might be playing as a character that prefers a certain biome over others. You can also determine the location of the lunar islands by walking around the edges of the map and finding the straight edges, so there are plenty of benefits in doing a bit of exploration in the first few days. I think overall Don't Starve Together is a much friendlier game towards beginners than it was in the past, and some recent updates have definitely been tailored towards newer players as well. There is an inbuilt wiki of sorts where you can look up every item and creature you've ever interacted with in the game. You can see stats, related items, and even get a few tips or insights into how to best use items from this. Oh, and if the scrapbook icon is annoying, you can just turn that off in the settings. I would also recommend turning on the setting that shows you all the items you can craft, even if you can't craft them yet. If you don't want any kinds of spoilers whatsoever, I can understand keeping this off, but I think it would be useful to see what kinds of things you can work towards, and it even tells you what machines and resources you would need to prototype them so you can have some kind of direction. Anyway, I hope this video helps you out in some way. I've got a bunch more of these guides in the playlist below if you're looking for help with anything particular in the game. Feel free to ask anything in the comments as well and I'll try to get back to everyone or even leave your own tips for people who might be scrolling through. Thanks for the support on these videos guys. Until next time, take care.